What do you remember of the night Los Angeles stopped? The way he crumpled to the court? The way he hobbled to the line? The tears in his eyes? The lipstick on his cheek? It's called the Achilles because even a Greek god needs that tendon intact. Yet there was Kobe Bryant pulling the ravaged Achilles down with his fingertips so he could uncork one more shot. For all he knew, it was his last. Down the tunnel, through the locker room, on the training table, an immortal wrestled with the afterlife. Seventeen years had passed since he arrived bald and skinny from the Philadelphia suburbs. He didn't need nine months of pain and doubt. He could catch one final helicopter home to Newport and do nothing but watch the girls play soccer. Dr. Patrick Soon Chong walked in the room. You should have surgery tomorrow, he said. What followed is as much a part of the Lakers' history and Bryant's own as the 81 against Toronto and the lob against Portland. No one would have blamed him for shaking his head or seeking a second opinion or at least taking the weekend to consider. Tomorrow, he replied. That's how long the wrestling match lasted. Ten seconds, max. What do I remember of the night Los Angeles stopped? The Stonecutter poem, written by a Danish journalist more than 100 years ago, hanging at Bryant's back as he faced the cameras in full uniform. When nothing seems to help, I go look at a stonecutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two, and I know it was not that blow that did it, but all that had gone before. He's clenched towels in his toes. He's grabbed marbles with his feet. He's seen his center leave and his team pick 12th. He doesn't know what he's lost or how he'll play. He can only promise the same thing he always has, everything he's got. The jersey is going back on, fabric in the teeth, right where it belongs. The rock is whole again.